Hi, welcome to the Endless Honeymoon podcast. I'm Moshe. It's an endless honeymoon, though. It is an endless honeymoon, which is kind of what I wanted to talk to you about tonight. Okay, you said you wanted to spring something on me. Well, we did. We usually have a like a fight of the week or something specific, some angle, but we haven't really had any fights. But it's been a big week for the both of us. Uh, it was the launch week of my album today, and uh, or Friday rather, and we went up to San Francisco. And we had a live Endless Honeymoon podcast taping that probably many of you heard. That was a huge success. We had like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people there. It was super awesome. Super fun. Matt Walsh and Morgan Walsh were very funny. They were super funny. And it was just a sweet moment. You know, the I felt like the, the couple, particularly the couple that came on second, you know, I just felt like it was such a perfect mix. For me, it was like a perfect mixture of what you like, which is that you like to you lean towards the help. And what I like, which is I lean towards the like roast. And to me, that was like a, per- a perfect kind of balance of the two. Well, I just like to take their problems seriously and listen. And then if I have any experience in that situation, I'll share it. And you're so good at it. And you're so wise. Thank you, Moshe. You're welcome. But I'm not a trained therapist. But you're close enough. And after that, we got on the cable cars. Natasha and I were staying at a hotel in San Francisco that was like right by a cable car stop. And so I was like, why don't we just get on the cable car? We had a couple hours to kill. And we took the cable cars up and through the the hills of San Francisco. And as painful uh, as San Francisco's uh, uh, morphing into a like yuppie stronghold has become, uh, it's still... I didn't see one cool looking person. Well, it's still the most beautiful city in America. It is gorgeous. And we took it up over by Lombard Street and the fog was rolling in and we passed Chinatown and it was Chinese New Year's and there were firecrackers going off and then we got off on Fisherman's Wharf. And they let us hang off the cable car at one point. Yeah. and That wasn't exactly my comfort zone but because I had heels on. Yeah. (laughs) but And the guy was kind of funny. He's like... Uh, you might want to lean in. It's a, it's, a, it's a little narrow and flip your backpack around. And I was like, oh, ha ha. That's part of the adventure. And he's like, not for me. That's paperwork. So he, was, <laughs> he said that's paperwork. Yeah, he was more concerned with his paperwork than with my life. We went out. We got off at the Fisherman's Wharf. We went for the super long walk down Fisherman's Wharf. These are all things that I hadn't done since I was like a four years old. I mean, I hadn't ridden on a cable car in probably 20 years. And 20 years ago, I was four because I'm 24 years old. I'm a millennial. Actually, I'm a Gen Zer, and I love the internet. And I love TikTok. <laughs> that's kind of what I'm into right now. Okay, but that's what you wanted to say? No, I'm not quite done yet. Okay. And then I was like, uh, no, I'm launching something. I, I have my my. Uh, my record coming out and i'm sure a lot of you bought it because it's been a number one on itunes ever since it came out that's amazing it's kind of nice and and there's a lot of like it's been well received i think but also just like the feeling of launching something is for me i don't know about you it's not never pleasant i'm never like fuck yeah i'm about to show myself to the world it's always like i'm almost like flinching from being struck when I put something out into the world, you know? And then you just did your last taping of your CBS sitcom last night. And it, it's coming out on April the 2nd. That's right. It's called Broke. It's called Broke. I have a starring part. You have, she's one of the t- the, the stars of the show. <laughs> and I guess what I was, what I was thinking of today is like, as I was like bracing for compliments and, uh, you know, and, and flinching for insults. And I've been on this like nonstop press tour. It's just like I I did uh, an episode of Lights Out today, and Christina Pazitsky, who's uh, Christina P. Christina P. Who's married to Tom Segura, and they do a, like a couple show, and they have two kids, and they're like, she just said to me right before we went on stage, we were talking about uh, you know, the road and and being worried about people and what people think or whatever, and she was like, yeah, and then you get to this point where she was like asking me like, has has monogamy been difficult for you? Because you're like you were like this like sex demon or whatever and i was like really i don't feel like it has it's been this weird rearranging of my selfness and she was like yeah something happens when you have kids where all your molecules get like rearranged (laughs) and i thought that was really interesting and she also said and then you realize like none of this is real none of this matters your kid is real your wife is real but all the rest of this is like kind of bullshit and i was thinking about that and uh and it it then I was thinking about this show, this podcast, and I was thinking about how people come to us with their problems. And 
and they're real problems. I mean, not every person that calls us is crying, but some of the people that have opened up to us, like that couple who was really going through something intense, you know, that woman grappling with her femininity and, and her old her old coding, her old programming. Which person are you talking about? The woman at the San Francisco show who was like, can I be a bride with a with lo- with short hair? Oh right. And you said very wisely, "Your bride and you are not the are not two separate entities. You're the same person." But I was just, yeah, she had a very she had like a split in her head that like in order to be a bride, she had to be how her mother wanted her to be, which is having long flowing hair. Right, and, and the thing that I had and I, a beautiful white dress. The thing that I had thought. Oh, and she wanted to know if she should grow out her hair and then postpone the wedding or something. Right, just so she can have like <laughs> luscious locks for the wedding. And the thing I thought about on the cable car that I wish that I brought up on the podcast that night is, and it pertains to what I'm talking about now. I hope this isn't boring, but this is just what I might. I don't know. I figure, hey, why not? It's been how many episodes, Laura? 32. 32 episodes. Why not be really sincere? Is that when you get married uh, or you couple up or you find love or wh- however you choose to do that. Some people don't decide to do that and that's okay too. But when you when you do find a partner and start a family, you know those like family trees that they draw? You split the tree and you create this new branch. And you create this branch that is you and your family, and no longer are the other branches on the tree uh, liable for your life force. Now mm-hmm. you're on your own branch, and you're sucking your own nutrients. And one day that child will get away from you and create their own branch. Yeah, make their own little acorn. You know, their own little acorn mush. And by that point, who God, who knows? What who you know? They'll probably be married to, to like their iPhone at at some point. <laughs> Because you know, that's what I always always thought. Once you legalize gay, gay uh, weddings, next thing you know, kids will be marrying their iPhones. But, um, but you make this branch, and it's yours, and it's your family, and, like, it, it, and you create your own rules, and you create your own society. And like, so that, I was thinking about that. And then what I was thinking about was like, you know, this idea that like nothing is real. The only thing that matters are the, are, 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 you know, the people that you love and, and, and your relationship with yourself and your relationship with the people around you and all this other like noise about success and, and, and striving and, and, and even to some degree like politics and, you know, the, the future. Not that it's not real, but it's not immediate. I was thinking about all the people that call into the podcast and bring us their actual frightening issues their their churning trauma their insecurities and they come to us and ask us for their advice knowing like you said that we aren't really trained in the arts of therapeutic uh, counseling uh, and i was just thinking that i am grateful for that and i was thinking that like in some small way the people that listen to this podcast have are, are part of our little branch because this is the intersection of the not real the fun and the real which is trying to get better that's what I was thinking about. What do you mean the real and the try to get better? Well, I'm saying like, you know, entertainment industry and all this like kind of striving for success stuff that all, that you and I are constantly, you know, dealing with. And then you come home and your family is there and you're like, well, this is so much more important. Why am I constantly worried about that other thing? You know, all that really matters is the people that I love and my own my own psyche and my own wealth, uh, 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 health rather, and my own well-being. And people are calling. You kind of care about your wealth, though, too. No, I do care about my wealth as well. But the people that are calling in, they're bringing us, they're they're offering us their well being, the well being part of their of their uh, of their lives, and so that's a that's a vulnerable thing. And I just am grateful that people are willing to to take that chance. I think your personality has changed since you grew a mustache. <laughs> Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know what I wash my face with? What? Comet. <laughs> well, you, sh- <laughs> you shouldn't use that. No? What should I use? Well, one of my favorite makeup companies, Glossier, has a new product out called Milky Jelly Cleanser. It's a luxurious, creamy gel formula that makes washing your face an elevated experience. It washes away excess oil, dirt, and makeup. It's gentle on your eyes and great for all skin types. It's Got really beautiful packaging that looks good on display because you know how aesthetic I am. Well, Milky Jelly Cleanser is one of Glossier's top selling products now, and people are obsessed. They're saying it'll clean your face even better than Comet or Tide. <laughs> Don't take a handful of Tide and rub it on your face. 
Use Glossier's Milky Jelly Cleanser. Milky Jelly Cleanser is the perfect way to start your skincare routine. The pH balanced formula has a blend of five skin conditioners. It's dermatologist tested, hypoallergenic, non irritating, cruelty, and paraben free. And Moshe, Glossier is what makes Brow Boy, which helped you with your mustache. Oh, that's right. I have a mustache I'm growing, and it's bright red. And Natasha one night was like, try my Brow Boy, turn it brown. I did it, and it looked natural. They're a great company. So you can learn more about Glossier and getting glowy, dewy skin by visiting Glossier.com slash podcast slash honeymoon, and they'll give you 10% off your first order. Get that milky jelly. Again, that's Glossier spelled G-L-O-S-S-I-E-R dot com slash podcast slash honeymoon. Certain exclusions apply. Okay, let's take a call. Let's call Lily and Patrick in Denver, Colorado. Hello. Hey, it's Natasha Legero and Moshe Kasher. Hi, this is Patrick. This is Lily and this is Patrick. How's it going? We're sitting in we're sitting in my car right now. We're actually I run like a DIY space and we're hosting a comedy show right now. So we're just, <laughs> we out, just step we're just out. out in the car. Uh, very happy to talk to you both. Oh, what there's a, a treasure tree. There's a stand up comedy show happening inside right now that you guys are literally producing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're hosting. <laughs> God, no. There's, there's enough people <laughs> working in that we don't need to be present. So, okay. So, I, since time is of the essence because you have a job to go to um, and you're both comedians, or are you you're working for free tonight? No, neither of us are comedians. Not now. Wait, we're, we're just, just hosting the show. We're, we're just, just hosting. Hosting by hosting that we're like having it at my house, not. MCing. Oh, you're literally hosting a soiree. You guys are very. Soiree. We're just having a, a quaint get together with strangers in our home. Who's coming <laughs> over? I don't know. Lots of people, apparently. It's like midway through the show right now. So, how is it? Who Who's the best comedian on the lineup tonight? I don't know. The first woman that performed was like maybe 70 years old and was playing like. Was she 70? She was old. I don't know. She was 70. Bright blue hair. And was playing bass ukulele, and it was a bass that, ukulele. Not, really, yes. <laughs> all, all local, unknown. Are you guys married? Not yet. All right. Well, take us through what's going on with the two of you, Lily okay, and Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Are you guys married? I love it. <laughs> um. Okay. So here's the deal. I two episodes ago, fight of the week. State of the Union hit so close to home. I am PMS fights is within a wheelhouse that is so real. Um, I am absolutely such a nightmare to deal with as an individual. And I, I just to reference, I'm a nightmare in regular life. But no, no, no. I've been talking me. to you for about 30 <laughs> seconds and I've picked up on it. Yeah, no, yeah. absolute nightmare. No, no, no. About, it's valid. But uh, PMS time is absolutely the most demonic situation. And I have this loving relationship with like a calm, nice person who's like respectful and we communicate. But when I have PMS, it is hell. It's hell. And I don't, we don't. And also, don't, don't you notice it start? It like sometimes it lasts like for two weeks. Yeah, no, it does. It is. It's, it's two. Like it's like a week and a half. And sometimes yeah. you're like in a bad mood, like before and like, what is the post no, I'm menstrual? A bad mood. I grab my boobs and I'm like, well, it's like just a touch bigger. Obviously, I'm going to be a cunt for like the next week and a half. Like it's it's on load. Oh, you're it's like saying a video game. What you're saying when so, the, when them titties swell, here comes the hell. Yes. I God, gotcha. that was, that's incredible. That's it's, so. I'm but good Lily, at what I, do. I mean, it's kind of awesome. It's like an excuse to be in a bad mood. It's an excuse to like oh, kind of be a bitch. Excuse. You know, yes. it's like it's an excuse to smoke pot. It's an excuse oh, to be like. More. I get to eat edibles and just make him watch reality TV with me. Yeah, like it's a it's a do. chance to win arguments. So Patrick, embrace it. Patrick, let me ask you. Uh, what what is an example of some of the demonic hellscape that has come from the tidal flood of uh, the Red Wedding? <laughs> well, we've been talking about this. The Red was, Wedding? I, yeah. I didn't know if I wanted to come up with the example. It might be a little... No, it's better. Oh, um, treacherous is a good word. Okay, well, I guess here's like a recent thing. We were going to uh, a wedding that her mom was officiating 
up in uh, Salida, Colorado. Yeah, you guys were up. Weren't you in Durango? When you guys were in Denver, you guys did like a good like tour of some Colorado. Totally. Mess, Lily, you? go ahead and put yourself on mute real quick. <laughs> uh, no, Patrick, <laughs> what were you saying? Yeah, I'm giving them photos. She told me to squeeze her hand if she starts talking too uh, out of context. And so I did a little squeeze there. Um, but, you know, so the wedding's at like five o'clock. It's like a two and a half hour drive. And like days in advance, she starts just freaking out about not getting there on time and we have to leave at like two o'clock to get make sure we're there which is not a problem and like so for days at a time she's just insulting like how slow i am how late like, i wake up every day like, like in the sense that like you wake up so late that we're not going to get to that place in time that I, that, in two that days guarantee that i'm not that i'm not capable of waking up you before know. 2 p.m to go no, no like i wake up around like 11 30 most days but um and so so that you know we're just pushing back the start time of like when we're having to leave okay but now i have to leave at noon now i have to leave at 11 and it's like 9 a.m all of a sudden but and you know of course we're driving up there and like we leave on time i get up fine and uh we're driving up there and and she's you know just screaming at my driving screaming screaming. at traffic just everything (laughs) And we, we get the slide. Wedding. We get the slide of like two hours early, like totally on time. And we have to get ready for the wedding. This is the issue, is the getting ready part. Well, we have to get ready. And she's been giving me all the shit for days about, you know, me being slow and me being the, uh, the, the factor of us being late. But, you know, and then she starts trying on different outfits and just like, so self-deprecating just like i got foundation on a jumpsuit that i okay so i put on this outfit it's this beautiful western like vintage like jumper and i i walk out and i was like i look like i'm in a cloud suit it's terrible and (laughs) so you're saying you're being unreasonable that's like yeah let's get roundabout let's get to detail. yeah 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 yeah. unreasonable but yeah basically but but the, the, point, nice point, of, the point of this example is she's not meeting. She she tried on clothes for so long and was so unsatisfied with, with how she looked, which you know, which is valid, but she's also <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> no, okay, wrong, said that wrong. She is extremely beautiful. Which is valid. She was looking kind of busted that day. Yeah, yeah. She's looking busted. She's no, looking fried. She's, she's looking on she her definitely her acts game. hot. <laughs> right, wait, uh Lily, are you are you super hot? I am super hot. Okay, got it. <laughs> and Patrick, would I, you? That's why we get to be a bitch. Oh, right now, Patrick, would you say that she's kind of the uh, looks wise the driver of the family? <laughs> Stop. Looks wise the what? The, the driver what? in the family. <laughs> no, we're we're both pretty. We're hot. both actually really. Hot. Okay, so you guys are both <laughs> you guys are both healthy eights. Is that what you'd say? I would it, say in, like in, hard in, in, Den- in Denver, probably. In Denver, <laughs> everybody's hot in Denver, though. No. Well, Hard, hard nine. Hard nine is difficult for me to believe because, like, my scale is like a nine is one of the most beautiful people you've ever seen in your life. And is that a, true? And a ten you've never met. You We're know, both a, very tall and very elegant and have great <laughs> body parts. Okay, okay, okay. Great oh, so body parts. You got great body parts. So you're saying when your when your titties swell a little bit, it's actually kind of supernatural in a way because they're already so voluptuous so it's, right. it's a superpower and then she becomes a nine okay great. so you guys what's going on what's the issue are you just wanting to know how to deal with her no i love i love him so much and we've been together for long enough that i'm like yo i want to stay with you and i'm a fucking nightmare how do you guys manage like what does marriage look like when you have this like I go to therapy all the time and it's something like I've talked to doctors about. Why not consult my favorite comedians on my podcast that I listen to every Monday morning? Sure. What You know, like it's like the dialogue behind how does long term marriage work when you have a brat that is a absolute nightmare to deal with that has unreasonable expectations. He cannot eat chips like if he has to eat silently, like there can be no evidence of sound or food for well, two weeks pretty much out of every You're month. saying he's annoying. Yes. Uh, awful. I- it's, it's, no, well, every, wait. Every little thing that's like kind of annoying is is like immediately fight starting material. Standard can, PMS. Can standard I, PMS. Can I poke a, a small hole in your um in your argument and see, you tell me if it's correct? 
is everything yeah. completely copacetic when you're not premenstrual, Lily? <laughs> That's or, a good or question. Are you, is this kind of a theme that gets more intense when you begin to get <laughs> premenstrual? I think that, like, I, I, I have a pretty good, like, self-awareness, and I do try to, like, show up with, like, compassion and, like, healthy communication. Because, honestly, like, it was hard for us to, like, find in and hone a specific example of stuff because we resolve things, like, healthy, happy adults. And I definitely, like, actively go to therapy and, like, work through my shit and have had a healthy time. So you're saying I mean, I'm also but I am a bitch. I'm an absolute bitch like out in the world, but I also do it like in a fair sense. But you're like, saying I'm not you, mean to you're saying that generally when you're not premenstrual, you guys are smooth, no friction, all is well. And then when those titties oh, the when the titties swell I up a little bit, it. you 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 Yeah, the titties swell, it's rough. Got it. Got it. Okay. Natasha, you have any thoughts over here? You don't want to hear my thought. What? They should break no, up? No, <laughs> I do. I do. I want to hear what she has to say. Well, how how old are how old are you? I'm 24 and Patrick is 27. I'm no, 20, she's 28. 28. He's 28. And do you she's want 28. to get married, Lily? It doesn't really seem I mean, like you're like, ready. Not right now, but like <laughs> I'm a picky bitch and we have like a healthy, fun relationship where I don't feel like it's going to be a messy marriage and we both don't want children and we have a nice dog and. It seems like he might not be the one. Dude, Natasha, you always uh, do this. Uh, no, but guess what? He is because he deals with it every month and is so loving and patient and also like lets me eat an obnoxious amount of edibles and sit on the couch in his house and watch my shows for as long as I want. It sounds like you need him right now to survive. <laughs> you should stay together. Don't get married. And then in 10 no. years, you'll find when you have a job, you'll find someone who's more suited to you who doesn't annoy you so much. No, uh, no, this he is... doesn't annoy me. Uh, Wait, let me specify this. It's just it's like a specific, like heightened awareness of things that could potentially get on my nerves. But there is no inclination of obnoxiousness that puts me over the edge that I want to say I don't want to be with you like I I look at you and I'm like I'm looking at you right now I love you to pieces Jesus oh. Christ it's obnoxious well it is <laughs> that is true but Patrick <laughs> what about you yeah. what I've heard a lot about um uh, I've heard All a lot right. about, yeah. uh, about, about some of the issues that you but what is it that Lily does does it do you share that view that she's pretty much perfect and then when her uh, I don't I don't even think that she uh believes that we are like argument free for the rest of the of the month PMS. We're healthy. Was but um, uh, no we're good. But no what it is is like she like will it's there's little things that we do like day to day, but they just, you know, they just they blow up way, way further. Like, you know, she she trusts me. She knows that like I would never cheat on her or like even, you know, remotely do anything like that. But but I'll go out um a night during a night during uh, PMS week, and, and the next day it's like, so how was last night? Who was there? Oh, she was there. Oh, how was she doing? You know that kind of stuff. Like uh, she's still with long term, like friends her. of mine, she's like so ten years. Funny. Right. So you, oh. so you do, Patrick, share the view uh, that Lily has, which is that the problems only arise when she's premenstrual. Is that true? The 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 big arguments we get into definitely right. Um, and and I and I I definitely detect when she's in that zone and i like i i see her as like shadow lily she's not she's not <laughs> lily you know she's she's being controlled by some other and some she, other yeah and so as soon as i realize it's happening which usually is like i can base that off of like this glare this like this, got this it look from hell yeah what i'm gonna and, recommend uh, i'm gonna recommend that lily right when you feel the uh the titties start to swell that you I, you guys go out and find a tailor and have the tailor uh make you up a red a red burlap uh gown and then when you feel the titties start to swell now are you pretty handy patrick you colorado um, boy yeah, can you build something with your bare hands absolutely yeah i can, I can uh Great. I can YouTube it and learn so it, you yeah. go out into the yard and you build yourself a nice red hut <laughs> right 
And then when oh, God, when, I would love one of those huts. Remember, I bought a tea tent from India, and right. that was what I was planning would be my period hut. Really incredible! Oh I want God. a period hut. And yeah, and then Lily, when you hut. when you feel it coming on, Get it's a like period hut. You got to be like a vampire who doesn't want to drink blood anymore. I mean, I know a blood analogy I isn't know. great in this situation since it's so blood specific and blood centric. But you I you know blood. the vampire who doesn't want to kill anymore when it's when he gets that bloodlust, he grabs a, a sheep from the local flock. He goes into a cave and he drinks sheep milk for a week until the uh, until the the lust passes. You know, you make, or the, you or th- make jokes, Moshe, but every woman deserves a period hut. Do you guys have any outdoor space? Yeah, get that period hut going. No, I got it. We can just go to my mom's. You can just send me to my mom's. That's and great. So your mom's mountain. rich. Have your mom like give a little space that's yours, mm-hmm. and then like go spend the night with your mom. Yeah, lash yourself to the maypole like a like a a, a, a werewolf <laughs> that's lashing himself to the tree on the full moon, and you just wait for that old period to pass. And when those titties deflate, and use it as a time when those back titties, to a B cup. When the titties deflate, everything's great. <laughs> back to business, and use it as a time. <laughs> And a time to like read things that you want to read or watch things that you want to watch that you know he doesn't want to watch with you and like just do your own thing. I think that's what we all want to do during like those those cramps. On a serious note, you you, you across- or watch reality TV. But on a serious note, I'm more sophisticated. Note. You know, I I want like. On a serious note, maybe when you are premenstrual and you know that you lose control of your emotions in that way, maybe give Patrick just a little bit more space, just a little bit wider of a berth. So that you can, uh, you know, do pro- you guys process. do that? Well, is that like a valid thing, like long term? I'm going to be honest with you. Like- we don't really relate to you guys right now. <laughs> <laughs> we get that, that you're fans. <laughs> we like you. No, but-, but honestly, you're inspiring me. I think that you know, I putting it out there. Obviously, it's on my mind too because it just happened enough for me to talk about it on the podcast, and you related to it. And I think it's a real thing. And why not start doing this? So I'm inspired by you guys. And let's all try to do that. Let's all try to get some space, especially during that time of the month. Get that red space, and everybody deserves space. That's why I surf. I like surfing because I get to get a little bit of distance mm. and have something where I do it. I do it on my own. Yeah, Moshe will like get up early, like sometimes like five thirty in the morning, and drive out to Santa Monica, which is like an hour drive. And even if it's just like a forty minute drive there, on his way back, there's traffic, and he'll spend like two hours driving back. And then he gets in the freezing cold California water, and it just sounds awful. But he it's loves like it. Hot. What is well, this? That, I love that. That sounds so amazing, cool. but yeah. but it's uh it snows for six months out of the year here. And no, I know, but what's your version of it? You don't have to take it literally. I'm just saying, get oh, your oh, I, space. I, I, I know. Like climb a mountain or what's some Colorado <laughs> shit? Get in a hot spring or climb an aspen ride tree. A, a horse. Yeah. yeah, ride a horse. That's what I think we're saying. Ride a horse. Ride we, we, a horse. Ride a horse, not each other. Good luck out there. <laughs> hey, thank, thank you guys for calling. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You are looking so hot right now. I can't stop staring at your bra. <laughs> You mean my boob? No, I'm not a boob man. I do not like your breasts, but I love your bra. And ever since you started wearing a bra, I've been aroused. That's because I found my perfect fit on thirdlove.com. I found my perfect fit in 60 seconds. Over 50 million women have taken their online fit finder quiz to find their perfect fit. I answered a few simple questions, found my perfect bra size based on breast size, shape, and fit issues. A lot of people don't know what their perfect fit is. I used to hook up with this one chick. I took a bra off. Quadruple D. Her breasts? They were A cups. This lady needed the Fit Finder quiz. Take your Fit Finder quiz, answer a few simple questions, find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. It's actually fun. It takes less than a minute to complete. You've got nothing to lose because every customer has 60 days to wear your bra, wash it, put it to the test. If you don't love it, you'll return it, and Third Love will wash it and donate it to a woman in need. Third Love donates all of their gently used return bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. So far, Third Love has donated over 15 million in bras. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering our listeners 15% off their first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash honeymoon now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first order. Get those A cups in an A cup. That's thirdlove.com slash honeymoon for 15% off today. Okay, let's play some secrets. Hi there. Um, my secret 
is um, in high school, I used to work for a music store. And when my boss would go on his lunch break, I would tape cassette tapes. This was in the 90s, so it was cassette tapes. And um, I used to wear pretty baggy jeans. So I would tape cassette tapes to my ankles or put them in my socks. And then when he would come back from his lunch break, I would go on my lunch break and I would basically steal them. I'd put them in my car. I'd untape them and put them on my car. Um, so I don't think I've ever told anyone that. And I don't really know why I did it because I'm actually a really big rule follower. So not sure. I don't know. I guess I thought that they owed me something or something. I don't know why I did it. But anyway, that was my secret, and I love your show um, so much. It really makes me laugh, and I love it. Okay, thanks. Oh, her little Midwestern accent. Oh, to be in a life where you're... I mean, I stole like that, but I'm not a rule follower, so I wouldn't think to confess it. Well, also, imagine that's the the worst thing you've ever done in your life, (laughs) is you stole a cassette tape. (laughs) And also, the way she shoplifted was so, I've never done anything else wrong in my life. She didn't just grab the cassette tape and put it in her pocket. She taped it to her ankle. Like there was going to be a fucking SWAT team that was. We gonna... didn't even hear what cassette it was. I know. I do wonder what. It's probably Barry Manilow. She seems like a square. I bet it was Rick Springfield. A, a sweet, sweet square. I think everybody's shoplifted. I got busted for the first time shoplifting. Uh, it was Lip Smackers lip gloss. It was very embarrassing. And then another time, Bailey's Irish cream. Very embarrassing. My friends and I used to play this game at the mall where you would pick a number and then you'd be like, Okay, four. And then like the fourth shop that you passed while you were walking, you had to shoplift something from. So we would like go into Spencer's Gifts or one time we went into Claire's Boutique and I walked out and my friend like opened her mouth and had like rings in her mouth. (laughs) We would try to think of like creative ways. Like once we like stole a watch off of like a mannequin and we would like cough really loud and then she would like jump up and like unscrew the watch and we used to have so many hustles we used to do it this. was fun we used to do this we would walk into the into a grocery store where the cigarettes were out in the front and um one of us would grab the uh you'd grab the cigarettes bring them to the back put them in your pocket and then you come up to the front where you were and you go i'm sorry do you guys have bird cages and they go bird cages no we don't have bird cages you'd be like oh okay and then you'd walk out so somehow the in our minds, that was the thing where we're like, oh, no, I was here for the bird cages this whole time. Another thing we would do is I used to be on food stamps, and we would grab the cigarettes, and we would bring them to the back, and we would you can't buy, uh, you would basically buy, uh, it would be like midnight, and we'd go to the back, we'd pour coffee, in like ground coffee into a bag, and we'd put the cigarettes into the coffee, go back up, buy the coffee with the food stamps, with the cigarette packs in there, get rid of them. You used food stamps as a child? Like your mom was like, here's some extra food stamps? No, I would steal them from my mom. Oh, you would steal the food stamps. So, lady, if you're listening right now and you're worried about the cassette tape, the Rick (laughs) Springfield cassette tape, I used to steal food stamps from my deaf mother, sneak to the grocery store, and then steal cigarettes with those food stamps. Yeah, I didn't have introspective thoughts till I was like 25. You're good. It sounds like you've had a good life. I remember going to my friend's family's house and stealing their jewelry. (laughs) <laughs> like bad. I used to do all kinds of terrible shit. Well, how do we make sure our daughter doesn't do that? Well, everybody's going to shoplift at some point. Why? No one told me it was wrong. That's probably why I did it. My pro- You knew it. My problem was that uh, I got really good at shoplifting. Or, or maybe I didn't. But maybe my friends knew that my ego was fragile and that I was like self-obsessed and that I was uh, my self-esteem was low. So they would say to me, they would go, We'd go to the grocery store and they'd go, oh, man, you got to steal a a fifth of whiskey. You're the best at it. You're the best (laughs) thief we know. And I would go. And and, and they'd go like. No, I don't want my daughter to do that. We'd steal it ourselves. But like, you're the master. And I'd be like, I am the master, aren't I? I'm putting her in private school to like erase all of her genes from your youth. Oh, you see, you think private school will, will. No private school kid has ever gotten in trouble with alcohol before. It's it's inescapable. How do I make her a nerd? I don't know. That's a great question. Can you make your kid a nerd? I'm not sure. Let us know if you have any ideas. Let's hear another secret. Hi. Um. So this is my secret. I have been dating a man 
for a year and about three months now, and I have faked every single orgasm Ooh. during this entire time. Well, I, with the exception of a couple of times, um, mostly I can't orgasm because of my antidepressants and um, my inability to orgasm kind of affected his um, self-esteem in our sexual relationship. And so at some point I decided that I would just take it and I've been doing so ever since and it has helped our sex life and I'm not upset that I can't orgasm and I'm very happy that he feels like I can orgasm but at the same time it's dishonest so thank you for listening and I love you guys okay bye that is so hard there was a lot going on there I had a lot of different emotions I mean I'm I would have done the same thing she's doing what just li- started lying I love that I'm like guy. so against it but in the sense that like I don't know what happens when you get on antidepressants and then his self esteem is she's attracted to him but his self esteem is low yeah but he's like what a hapless fool that guy is he's just like I just don't understand why you can't have an orgasm because of these antidepressants it's really making you, me feel bad and then she's like oh is that right I can have an orgasm. I can have an orgasm every time we have sex. And he's just like happily pumping away like, I'm really glad that my talk with my girl made her come every time. Like if he thought about this situation for five seconds and realized she started coming uncontrollably the moment after he told her he felt bad when she didn't come, he'd be like, oh, right. These are all fake. That's true. But at the same time, it's got to be hard. Well, I wonder- As a man, you wouldn't feel bad if your girlfriend could never have an orgasm? Of course. Well, yeah, but if it was physiological, I don't know. At first, It's not like everyone just understands that that's true. You my- might think like, well, maybe it's me. Yeah, my first instinct was definitely, well, why would you not talk and be honest with it? Why would you s- sacrifice your own truth in order to make the- this partner feel better? But if it literally is a physiological impossibility for her to have orgasms, which I do have a hard time believing that when you're on antidepressants, you just cannot have orgasms. I, I'm sure it's harder. I, what do I know? I actually don't know. I- if I were on antidepressants, I would be trying, like I do with my dog's medication, to get that cum balance going to shorten the um, or to to lessen the amount gradually to, to to make it a goal to use less at all times really or, or as what? i go forward no what really if you had depression that popped up the moment you stopped taking the medication not everybody is able to wean themselves off of antidepressants i think some people are and those I've, are the I, yeah ones. i guess i don't really have any experience with it so i can't say i just feel like people over medicate and medication no well i don't know i don't know i think antidepressants save lives so i think it's much more important no, for you're people right. to be alive and happy and thriving than for them to be coming all the time but it does seem depressing not to come i am curious and i would like her to call back if you're listening do you want sex for yourself like is the sex without the orgasm desirable? To That's you? the thing. There's a lot of follow up questions. I am curious. No, but I, I I hear what you're saying. It's tempting to say that the world is over medicated, but of course. But also, it's like if you're just on Adderall to finish a movie or finish like writing something, versus like you're on like serious antidepressants so you don't like kill yourself. I guess there's like a spectrum. There's a huge spectrum, and some people have the kind of mental illness where they can wean themselves off of antidepressants, and some people just don't have that luxury. Right, of course. And so they just have to be. And I feel very lucky that I've never had to be on antidepressants. So if you're taking your antidepressants... But if you're not on antidepressants, you shouldn't fake your orgasms, I'd like to say. Right. If you do not have a physiological (laughs) uh, uh, disability that's keeping you from orgasming, don't fake orgasms for your partner so that they can feel better. Actually, find a way for your partner to give you orgasms so that you can both feel better. Yes. Amen. Let's play another secret. So this is my secret. I live in a state where uh, weed is legal. And so I used to do food delivery in college. And one night I was doing it on 420. And I kept trying to deliver food. And these dudes were so, everyone was so high that I would say I did 10 deliveries. And every single one had either an invalid address or they wrote the address of the place they ordered food from or something random like Target. So I was just like, fuck it. And instead of calling 
all these people. I just took like 10 orders of food home and I had food for like a week and it was fucking glorious. So that's my secret. Love you guys. I mean, I can see like sitting in your apartment, eat like reheating this old cheeseburger that's like really truffle fries, you know, and it's like day three, but it's still good. And you feel like, I don't know, I'd feel pretty good doing that. I feel way better about this woman than the, than the other woman that was like, I sometimes slurp people's shakes right before I drop them <laughs> off. How about you just take the whole damn meal? This thing, that whole secret played like a stoner comedy. And the and the the <laughs> ultimate scene was just this woman like staring at ninety orders of of In and Out Burger and just going, "We done good." Should we play one more? Okay, one more. Hi, Moshe. Hi, uh, Natasha. This is um, a good secret, I think. Uh, all right, so here it goes. Uh, I lived across the street growing up from a girl that I thought was like, you know, that classic girl next door, our hot girl. And uh, she was only a couple of years older than me. But one time they asked me to house it for them because they had cats and whatever and water plants. So I snuck into her room and stole a pair of sexy panties from her. Yeah, I'm not proud of that one. But uh, it happened. And if I'm not mistaken, they may still somewhere be in my house today. He's like, I'm not proud of it, but I'm also not getting rid of them. They're definitely (laughs) my most prized possession, and I will never, ever let them go. And I wear them on my head every night. I tuck my penis between my legs and sing goodbye horses. I do not relate to that. I have never related to that idea of like, someone's panties being erotic someone's underpants like it just is so weird to me like this inanimate fabric i'm like ooh, the, you don't want to smell her pussy ooh, juices the pussy was here oh dirty i just like why what is hot you, about you put that? it in the feet cate- category yeah i just nothing about it has any erotic charge i hear you it sounds gross to me i also think lingerie when i think of your underwear <laughs> <laughs> I, also, I pick up your underwear all the time so i'm like yeah they don't really have an erotic feeling <laughs> right you pick it up when i do the um rubber band trick and i snap it in your face and then it falls down at your feet and then you have to pick them up I've that also just, is so funny that a woman would find her husband's old underwear oh, erotic. oh fruit of the looms <laughs> I just, I also don't think <laughs> lingerie generally is, is hot. I feel yeah, like- you told me that. Because remember once when we first started dating, I came to pick you up at the airport and I was wearing like a fur jacket and underneath I had like my underwear. I thought that was like really hot to like surprise you. But then you told me later that you don't generally like lingerie. I, no, you're- and I felt kind of dumb for doing that because I thought it was like a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is foolproof. <laughs> This is a classic, I, I you know, from my the, childhood that a did, man would appreciate. But your timeline who is... Who I'm trying to seduce. Your timeline is bullshit. It's not like you showed up, <laughs> you were in a fur coat, you opened the fur coat, I looked down at your teddy or whatever, and I was like, um, I'm not really into no, that. No, it's just true. So I like that you did it the way you did it, which was tell me two months later. <laughs> I ravenously made love to you, right? That was sweet. Right? But didn't you think it was kind of cute? I, didn't I munched your box all the way oh home? My God. Remember? Didn't you think that was kind of cute, though? It was very sweet. It's just at a different time, a different conversation. I was like, the truth is I'm not that into lingerie. I just feel like it reminds me of like a white snake uh, video. I hear you. It's just like, oh, I, the snap goes here and... Uh, uh, you know, like teased hair and like cocaine and stuff. Yeah, I'm not really. I, I'm trying to picture it. Doesn't really turn me on. Either. Yeah, just give me I, what I want is a woman in my old underwear. Ew. I'm just kidding. <laughs> in your dirty underwear. Yeah, just a woman in my dirty <laughs> underwear, but still the fur coat. Actually, um, I think that the guy with the dirty underwear. You know what? I think he should just uh, keep that as a memento of his dirtiest time and uh, and move along. It's nice to have secrets. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. I love shoes. But what I don't like about shoes is that they're not made of recycled plastic water bottles. (laughs) (laughs) Can you recommend a company that does both? Rothy's. 
Yes, I have heard about them. They're the ones that make the stylish shoes for women and girls out of recycled plastic water bottles. They're comfortable and machine washable. Rothy's has quickly grown to a most loved, gotta have them brand, and it's no surprise they have over a thousand nearly perfect reviews. If you get a mess, you can toss them in the washing machine and wash them shoes. It'll blow your mind that they're made from repurposed plastic water bottles. In fact, Rothy's has diverted over 35 million water bottles from landfills already. But they take sustainability seriously beyond that. They own and operate their own manufacturing workshop. They pr- prioritize sustainability every step of the way. They ship directly in their shoebox, no unnecessary packaging. These are feel-good flats in more ways than one. And they sent me and my daughter a pair of black ones, and we love them. They're so cute. We'll wear them together. You'll quickly discover why BuzzFeed called them their forever shoes. So you go get some yourself. Go find all the amazing styles available right now at rothys.com slash honeymoon. Go to rothys.com, R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash honeymoon and get your new favorite flats today. Now we're going to call Darren in Chicago. It's a woman. Hello? Hi, is this Darren? Hi, Natasha and Rosha. Is this the lady, yeah, is this the lady Darren? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. We are thrilled to be talking to you. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, well, so I feel like you guys have a similar experience that I have, and I wanted your your take on it. Let's hear it. So so about a year and a half ago, I got divorced. Um, it was ultimately for the best, and I started dating pretty quickly thereafter. Um, and I wasn't looking for anything serious, definitely. Uh, I'm really independent and uh kind of spent a long time feeling trapped in a marriage um oh so then I I, now meeting... i now i see why you think we would relate to this because i because i feel trapped in my current marriage <laughs> i was wondering i was like we're not divorced and then you said the trapped in the marriage thing i was like oh my god i'm relating so hard to this right now i know uh long lead i'm giving you a long lead in. no we want it keep keep talking so, so you're divorced um, now i'm divorced now yeah um, so anyway, I met somebody and he was very cool, interesting, brilliant. Um, and like we had a great communication style. We, we communicate well. Um, but he had decided on a non-monogamous lifestyle. And that is not something that I had even really heard much about, let alone, you know, tried. What do you mean he decided yeah, on that? Before you met or... He, it, what, how did this? Yeah, how do you before know? we met. Uh huh. Yeah. Did, oh, you mean like he's like met. that's who I am. Exactly. Exactly. Interesting. And in his, he was also divorced, so he in his marriage had had that too. So um, that's just like he's like this is who I am. Exactly. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, and so I was really more in the market for like a part-time boyfriend anyway. Mm-hmm. So I was like, cool, sounds good. Um, and not even thinking too far into the future on it. And, uh, you know, we're, we've now been together for about a year. Um, and about halfway into that, I got like really uncomfortable with the non-monogamous thing. I've read everything I could read. I committed to trying it. So I, I said, okay, I'm going to try this and see how it goes. And I ended up really not liking it and, and letting him know that, um, as much as I wanted to be in a relationship with him, it couldn't be like that. So he agreed to be monogamous, um, which is awesome. And I didn't fully expect that. And so um, this is where the parallel is. Uh, I feel like, um, Moshe, you've talked about being non-monogamous for uh, prior to meeting Natasha. And now you're not. So what's I'm- that like? How'd that go? Oh, that's so interesting that you bring that up. You're just so you're not you don't have any questions for us to answer for you. It's like you won. You won the you won the battle. You want to know what it's like yeah, for, for like, me now. Yeah, because I it's not one I want to win. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Right. <laughs> I mean, here's the bad news for you is that I was not non monogamous as a philosophical bent on life. I wasn't like I am a person who 
for whom monogamy is not in the cards. You were waiting for the right gal. I wasn't like, I also wasn't pining for monogamy, but I wasn't like, I, I hadn't read any books. I hadn't, I hadn't gone like, ah, polyamory, that's who I am. I was just out there like big pun, crushing a lot. And, <laughs> and, and, and not ever being good at monogamy. So I had a fantasy, uh, and he'd been married before, and you'd been married before. My my uh, remo- uh, romantic development was much more immature. It was more like, wow, I'm, you know, thirty now, and I've still never found a, a, a serious relationship. So I feel almost like I my experience isn't going to be very helpful for you because what you want to hear is literally what I said at the beginning of this podcast. How could you have known that this is what I was going to be talking about? But it was in our intro. It, which, which is that something inside of me being with Natasha has shifted where I don't find myself pining uh, for uh, for other uh, for extra stuff anymore. I almost feel like I've had my chemistry uh, rearranged because I was such a person of variety and temporariness for such a long time, and now I'm such a person for whom this relationship is sort of the foundation of my life i mean are you but so i i I would like to ask you are you do you have a thought natasha i was just happy to hear you say that oh well i mean i mean i have to say it on on the podcast (laughs) but no are you concerned that you have basically neutered him or something Yeah, clipped the wings of a of a parrot that wants to fly yeah that's exactly it so we both want a lot of freedom but I define freedom a little differently and I'm afraid I'm, I'm boxing him in and I don't want that for him. But you know what? It's like, he's agreeing to it. And obviously like if Moshe is at a show and now he's got this like really cute mustache and he's going away this weekend. And I'm sure a lot of girls will flirt with him. I've seen girls at my, the show I do, he comes and people are flirting with him and you know, I'm it's a like, hard nine. I'm sure he would like <laughs> to like be with, you know, or like, you know, fuck one of them in my dressing room when yeah. I'm like, you know. Yeah, totally. Right over the, um, <laughs> but, it, but right between the coffee table and the couch. I would have her, her, her legs be on the coffee table, her hands on the couch, and I'd be standing up. And I have a anyway, harness that I, I would attach to the roof. And so I'd be hanging kind of like. I can't feel bad for him <laughs> because he fantasizes about that, you know, like. It's just like he's agreeing to it, I guess. But I mean, on the so, other hand, what can you do? Yeah, but on the other hand, isn't the world filled with people with the opposite, which is women that and men, I'm sure, but mostly my experience was women who are pretending, reluctantly pretending that they're okay with non-monogamous relationships, going like, "Oh yeah, no, I'm not looking for anything serious either." And the guy's like, "Great." Yeah, like, my friend was setting someone up the other day and is like, yeah, he's going through a divorce. He needs to fuck. And the girl's like, we're getting married. Right. I mean, that's like a very common idea. So, but also it's like the world's ending. Grab a partner. Be safe. You don't want to like dissipate your energy. It's good to be in a monogamous relationship, in my opinion. I like it. it makes me feel safe. Have you talked to him? How long has it been since you guys have been monogamous? Since this great ultimatum? <laughs> Hey, I made it. I was really tried hard to make it not an ultimatum. <laughs> it was a non-ultimatum um, where you were like, either be monogamous or I can't be with you anymore. What? Wh- yeah. How you long? Seem, are- you, honestly, you seem pretty cool. She does seem cool. You're like, you seem open. You tried it. It wasn't for you, you know. And and there's like so many big reasons why you wouldn't want to do it, you know. And just like my right. main thing too is like, you know, I don't want I don't want to get a disease. Right. That's why she. That's like a big thing. Right. That's why for me yeah. in our relationship, our agreement of what monogamy is is I can be in the same room with a woman, and I can masturbate in front of that woman, but I, there has to be five <laughs> feet of space. Here's where I lose it. This is to me the 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 problem with an open relationship. Like I don't want you to be like all dressed up and put on your cologne and going out to fuck somebody else. And I'm like, where are you going? I'm like, got the kid. I'm like, where are you going? You're like, oh, you know, I I, I have a date. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, cause like in an open situation, I'm assuming that's what you would say. Right. Cause you don't want to be like, oh, and like tell a lie. Well, so like the whole thing just kind of seems like, okay, that just seems like so much energy. And like, 
you know, you got a baby and then you got to are you going to do bedtime before your date? You know, can you read the kid a story before you go fuck <laughs> some other woman and go to a bar? Well, wait, but and then like I got a pump and I'm breastfeeding. I mean, the whole thing is just off. Oh, so you started breastfeeding again in this. Fantasy. I'm just saying you like you have a baby. It's like the ma- the man would be ready way sooner than the woman after a baby. Right. But you're to, like ass- go like start opening up the relationship. But you're assuming a lot. And Natasha, I will say, has a lot of biases against open relationship i don't have a lot of biases i just thought it through and i'm like you just thought it through and you realize that they are fundamentally broken no i'm just saying that that well, one point <laughs> yeah that one point of like me dressed up in like a like my ass looks really good and i'm I, you know i smell good my hair looks good and you're like where are you going i'm like i have a date <laughs> put the kid down well i, I don't know it just I, i'd rather us have a date and I don't know. Yeah. It yeah. seems because I chose to be with you. Like, I don't want to start to get to know like four other people while I, while I also have a baby I'm raising and a relationship with you. It seems like so much work. Well, OK, so back to my exactly. back to my question. It's been how long since you guys have been monogamous? Four months. Four months. And how much Itch. how much have you guys talked about how he's feeling since the switch? Um, Probably twice. And what's his what's what's he saying? That he's fine. That's good. <laughs> that and, and do yeah, you bring up the conversation, or does he? Uh, I it, it depends. I mean, I guess the in the two times, probably once each of us. That's great. And I I noticed that with Moshe too when we first started to get together. And Moshe, you might not even remember this, but like I knew that he was how he was, and you know he would bring it up sometimes, like. After like three months would go by, he was like, what do you think? You know, just like touching base. Like, what do you think of the relationship? And I think that's really healthy. I would be like, have you met Denise? (laughs) She's been living in the downstairs apartment. What do you think about her? And again, a rejection every time. But Darren, um, you say he says he's fine. I mean, I'm curious. But the fact that he's bringing up too, I think is good. I agree. I'm curious. Like, what is he saying? How is he? How is he doing? So last time we talked about it, he said it's, it's, he has no interest in really looking outside for anything. So it hasn't come up for him. I mean, when we had the conversation initially, he said, you've tried non-monogamy for me. So I'm willing to try monogamy for you. And so he, on the most recent one, he said, Hey, I'm glad I had the room to say that. And to say that that's something I'm going to try, not something I'm going to commit to, but I'm feeling good about it. And don't feel trapped. We're bo- we're both really busy too, so it just came down to you know you're so I only see you sometimes, and then you're how do you split your time on that? And then I'm upset about the the non monogamy thing, and so is another person, and so it's just like now you have two crying women to deal with, and it just I just was having a hard time connecting to why this was a positive thing. Got it. Right. So, I mean, one of the things that I actually... It's an idealistic thing for men because they're so horny. But it's not just men that like open <laughs> relationships. That's 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 a little reductive. Some women, this is what they oh, want. Oh, I know. I'm sure there are more men than women. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fool. But one of the things I admire about the non-monogamy world or the polyamory world is that they're like, they're really interested in... Their, their philosophy is that this thing can't really work unless there's a lot of open lines of communication. Right. And Which I, is why you can't lie when you're getting ready for a date. Right. And so I think that's like that to me feels uh, feels true. If, if, if open relationships are ever going to work, it can only work when there's like not a lot of secrets being being. Hence open relationship. Right. Keeping it open. And so what what is nice is that you guys have you've continued that openness and that open communication. Probably that he learned in his years as a non-monogamous person, he's able to bring that same kind of open communication into your monogamous relationship. And like and and like every relationship, monogamous or not, is a negotiation. Always. It's always like, is this is this Am I is this worth enough to me that I'm willing to make this sacrifice? Is this am I getting enough out of this relationship that it is that that it's worth it? And like, you know, like I would encourage you to think not that he uh which is I think a probably a tempting illusion, Darren, is that he sacrificed his true self because you told him my way or the highway. And instead you can look at it like he met someone that was so awesome to him, that is you, uh that he decided, even though his natural state 
is non-monogamy, he'd rather have you monogamously than not have you at all. And that's kind of like that's a beautiful thing. So in that in that view, he's not he's not pushing down his true self. He's actually engaging. He's, he's changing in the moment. Yeah, and he's changing his because true of self. you. Yeah. And he's engaging with his true self because because you bring that out of him. So there's something really cool about that. Also, threesomes. <laughs> and there's that. Yeah, there's always that. That's always an option. Well, that goes in the same category. You think? <laughs> what do you think, Darren? Yeah, I think so. I think so, but I think that's not something I'm automatically closed off to. But I'm definitely not there yet. Well, listen, if you're not closed off to it, if he starts to get squirrely at any point... Moshe's very open to it. My recommend- <laughs> I know. <I've> <laughs> my recommendation, if he starts getting squirrely and you're afraid you're going to lose him and you don't want to... You should throw that out there. Like, just so you know, I'm not closed off to the possibility of a threesome oh, at knows. some point. Yeah. But just bring that up if he ever gets squirrely. You don't ever have to actually <laughs> let him have the threesome, but just bring it up and it'll keep him around for at least another six months. He'll be like, oh, really? <laughs> okay, then I'll stick around. But I hear what you're saying. Like, you guys were so busy that with him, with, 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 with not even getting to see each other enough, the idea that he was off gallivanting with other people just made the whole thing feel like, what are we even doing here? Right. I have a question. Uh, you, yeah. Moshe, in your head, you're saying that having threesomes and being in an open relationship are different. Absolutely, yes. Hmm. I think, yeah. Do you, Darren, do you think that that's insane, what I'm saying? I don't think it's insane, but um, I can see where it goes either way. Um, the difference between a threesome, I would say, is um, you're there together, right? So you're kind of making that decision oh, that's together. You're true. spending your time in the same place. That's a good right. point. To me, that's like... to But me, also, what if it starts to become the same person and then it becomes a lover? A, that's a whole other thing. Then you're thing. in an open relationship. That's yeah, a whole that other thing. Yeah, that sounds terrible. But, <laughs> no, that, does, that sounds terrible to me too. That's the thing. That's the difference between me and your, your man, Darren, is there's no part of me ever in life ever that had even the slightest desire, not even a drop of desire to be in a relationship with two or three different people at the same time like zero interest in that what i wanted was a i think it's called having my cake and eating it too <laughs> i wanted i wanted love and intimacy and companionship with my partner and i wanted also to be able to go have completely meaningless physical sex with people whenever i wanted to that's not really an open relationship that's <laughs> that's something different so, <laughs> yeah something less mature but i think that the difference to me with a threesome and an open relationship is uh, it can be what you're saying. Like you invite a person in and they become a part of your life, which sounds very uncomfortable. But it can also be like, oh, this is a sexual experiment that we engaged in together. Not that dissimilar from dressing up in a nurse's outfit or watching porn together or some other thing. But I just think like it's like a Pringle in a sense that you can't just once have you, one. Once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah. So then it's like once you do the first one, then all of a sudden the person is like searching the internet, like, okay, or, you know, we found there's, another one. there's another one. It's coming. What, 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 what do you want? Right. And that's, it just feels like, that's why sex workers are good in this situation because they, they add, I think a sex worker would add a second layer of like, this isn't, this isn't dating to the equation. And not only that, but they charge by the pop. So, you oh, know, you're you, saying it's like it's so we expensive. can spend all our money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At a certain no, point, no. Moshe's you go, saying like at a certain point, he's like, I can't really afford this yeah, anymore. Yeah, once I pop, <laughs> I can stop if I watch my bank account drop. <laughs> I just think because it could become habit for me, ha- a habit in that in that sense, I'm out because I don't really want that to happen and for that reason you are out for that reason this is the hottest episode of shark tank i've ever seen (laughs) well darren this has become about you counseling us i feel like but um but but mostly i'm feeling good about your chances here i i mean i don't know that your your partner has changed fundamentally but it sounds like he's found someone that he likes enough that it's made him want to change. And that's a pretty big battle. And I like that he talks to you about it and he checks in with you. And right now he's telling you what he thinks and that's good. And you got to believe him. You can't be like, Oh, he's probably lying. Right. Cause there's there's nothing worse than either one of you denying your true self in order to stay in the relationship. And right now it doesn't seem like either one is happening. So we wish you luck out there.
Thank you, guys. Good Thank luck. You. Nice talking to you. Don't let them fuck other Thanks. people. Good Bye. talking to you. Bye. Well, Tosh, this has been a fun episode. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed you. We've talked to a couple of hard nines. <laughs> and we talked to a couple that went through their hard times. I think we're soft nines, honey. You and I? We might be hard eights. What is the difference between a hard eight and a soft nine? Let us know. If you're on antidepressants and you have sex, let us know what that's like. And if you understand the number scale of human sexuality and desirableness, let us know the difference between an 8.5 hard and a 9.0 soft. And I have one more bit of advice for the person who's faking all of her orgasms with her partner because she's on antidepressants. Yeah. At least keep trying to have them. I agree. To all of our listeners who trust us with your secrets and with your advice, we appreciate you. And we are I'm sorry if it seems like we're making fun of you. If you haven't done so yet. It's just yet. my like natural mode that I go into. No, we love we love it. Moshe always tells me to talk more, but when I talk more, I'm just kind of mean. <laughs> no, you're good. You have so great I'm trying wisdom. to not be too mean. You have great wisdom, Natasha, and that's, that is part of why I married you. Um, if you're listening uh, and you're a, a, an avid listener and you have not yet done so, go to the iTunes app, give us a five-star review. Give us a review. We're type a review, but really give us a five-star and, and uh, tell your friends about the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. We're coming to a city near you, so come see us live. And uh, Oh, we're starting a tour. It's uh, going to be, dates will be announced, I'd say, in the next couple weeks. We're just yeah. finalizing a few more dates. Well, come see us. You know why? Because we love you. And guess what else? Natasha? Yeah? I love you. Thank you. I love you too. <laughs>